Hey guys, what is up? You know, sometimes when you wake up, you feel a little bit rusty. Our whole channel is about how to take care of your RV. All these DIY jobs where you can get in there and take care of this thing so it doesn't die a slow death. Well, on some days, you just don't feel like it, right? I mean, you might be tired, your knees are hurting or whatever, and that's certainly not a day you wanna tackle a full washing and detailing on one of these bad boys, right? On these kind of days, you want to take care of the more easier things. And that's what we're going to do today. Today, we're going to deal with rust. Details coming up on RV Street. Before we get into the details of this video, where I deal with five areas of rust that we had on our coach, I'd like to show you first some before and after pics of the areas that we dealt with. And at the end of this video, I'd like to share with you uh, some thoughts that I have about how these DIY jobs impact your children and your grandchildren. Okay, let's get right to it. I dare say probably every RV that has a little age on it is going to have some rust. So for those of you who are maybe looking for an RV, getting underneath the RV and looking and seeing if there is serious rust is certainly something to consider if you're looking to buy an RV. Now, if it's slightly um, rusty underneath there, I mean, it's not a real big deal. Like I said, most RVs are gonna have some, but you don't want to just avoid you know, crawling underneath there and looking. You want to look you know, to see if there's serious damage that's already been done. One way to deal with severe rust you get underneath there and do some serious scraping, get a drill motor of some kind and put a wire wheel on there and just grind off all that heavy rust and all that type of thing. And then use a product like Pour 15. Now Pour 15 is very expensive. It's a very labor intensive and it costs a whole lot more money than what we're gonna show you today. Now our motorhome fortunately has very little rust. Uh, when we found this coach here, uh, I was so happy to see that it did not have hardly any rust. But we've had it now for about, what, four or five years, going on five years, and it's developed five areas of some small light rust, and I, don't, I wanna get control of it now. So that's what we're going to do today. We're gonna get control of this rust and get it back to new. We're up here in Indiana right now, and I've been waiting for it to get warm, to get, to get the right conditions to do this job. We're gonna be using a rust inhibitor, and then we're gonna be using a top coat paint. And these conditions right now is about 78 degrees, no rain in the forecast, it's perfect. We're going to be treating five areas. We're gonna be treating my exhaust pipe, the water heater access door, an area on the chassis frame up front, a back panel on my tool bay, and my propane tank. The rust treatment that we're gonna be using today is Permatex Rust Treatment. It's a spray can, makes this stuff really easy to apply. And even though it's not a standalone product, as I said, we're gonna put a top coat of paint on top of this once we're done, and it's gonna protect that, and in the different areas we're going to go to, it's gonna match the motorhome. Now I've used this product before on, my, on other cars that I've owned in my truck. So I know from experience, this stuff works. The key is, is putting the top coat afterwards. I'll explain a little bit more about this as we proceed through the process. So this is a real easy way to spray on to inhibit and destroy existing rust. Then we're gonna come back with the top coat. So here we are on the back panel of my tool bay. So the first thing I'm going to do is just take a, a light scraper and get some of this light flaky paint off of here. We do not have to take all this black paint off. We're just after the loose stuff. And once you get all the loose stuff off, then we're going to sand it. I've got some 80 grit sandpaper here. Just fold it like this here. We do not need to sand this down to the bare metal. We're just taking off that loose surface paint and just lightly sanding it 
because when, once we apply the Permatex, it's going to bond to all of this. So, just a light sand. The whole point of this is making this easy, right? Not only easy, but this is going to work really good. It's going to bond and protect this from further rusting. I'm going to go ahead. I see a little bit of rust right here, too. I've already repainted all of the bottom uh, angle irons on all of my bays. I did that about two years ago. But I see just a little bit here. So I'm going to go ahead and lightly sand and, and we're going to do this little piece right here too. Okay, that's it for the sanding. Now we're going to take our acetone in a paper towel. Again, always make sure you're wearing eye protection. And gloves. You see how we got that off of there? And that's it. This is ready to apply Permatex. Now let's go to the next item. Now, I know some of you are thinking I'm just nuts, and <laughs> what are you painting me a muffler for? Well, you know, I just like having everything clean. You know how anal I am about this, and I'm underneath here. So on this part, you don't need to do any scraping, okay? All we're going to do is lightly sand, then we're going to use the Permatex, and then we're going to use a very high heat uh, paint as a top coat. So let's just go ahead and prepare this real quick. So as you can see, I did not have to take all that rust off down to bare metal. You don't have to do that. I just lightly sanded it just to get a little bit of that surface rust off of there. And now I'm using acetone to get the dust off. This is the beauty of this Permatex product. You know, like I was saying earlier, when you have real heavy, serious rust, where it requires pour 15 or something like that, man, you have this endless labor. But with this Permatex, not so much. So we're done here. Let's go to the next project. Okay, so here we are at the water heater access door. And uh, as you've seen, this is a real common problem. So you remember when you flush the, the water heater, that water just comes spewing out here and gets all over this door. I know other people have come up with these uh, kind of ideas on how they deal with that, but you know what? This is not a big deal. This coach is nine years old, and that's about this little bit of rust as we've uh, accumulated, but we're gonna deal with this rust, okay? So let me show you. For this job, we're just gonna take my brass bristle brush, right? Because it's not as abrasive, and we're just gonna get in here and we're just going to get down in there again as i said earlier we do not need to take this down to bare metal that's the whole purpose of using this permatex we'll take my sandpaper kind of get down in here a little bit and after we have used our brass bristle brush and a little bit of sandpaper take the acetone and clean off all the dust and that's it I mean, this, this prep right here for this took me two minutes, maybe. Let's go to the next item. Okay, so same exact thing here. We're just going to wire brush with my brass bristle brush. I, I've always come to like uh, the brass bristle brush because it's not as, as abrasive as a steel brush. So it's just the same thing, folks, you know, I mean, but I'm, what I'm trying to show you what's so easy about this is that you just need to get the flaky stuff off, which is very easy to do. Okay, so we've scraped off the loose um, paint. I took off that label that was there. Don't need to have that on there. And now we're going to lightly sand. Now you know when I cover the basic tools every RVer should be carrying at all times. It's stuff like this. You know, when you get a job, boom, you go to the tool bag, you get what you need, take care of business. Can, I mean, the tank overall, you can see, is really quite nice. So let's move on to the next item. Okay, so we're going to the front of the coach to do that front part of the chassis that was a little rusted. Again, it really didn't need it. But, you know, I like keeping all that surface rust off. And every time I open up this hood and looking in there to do service and stuff like that, I'm like, you know, I need to take care of this rust. So I'm going to hand the camera over to Joni here, and I'm going to show you how I prepared this area to uh, take care of this light rust. 
So you can see here, we have the transmission cooler and below here we have the oil cooler and we had a hole right here on in between the top part that was rusty and the bottom part and I didn't wipe this down yet with acetone I've already sanded it and I wanted to show you how I fixed this I took some cardboard and I kind of wrapped it around and protected any of this uh, permatex or, or paint or dust or anything getting inside the coils then I covered this area, this whole, this oblong hole area with another piece of cardboard and then another piece of cardboard here. I also, if you remember in that picture, this wiring harness was um, zip tied right across here. So I clipped that zip tie in both places, lifted it up and I'm just hanging it here with a zip tie around the air filter here so I can get that up out of the way. I'm able to sand that area and now I'm going to wipe it off with acetone and it'll be ready to go for the first coats of Permatex. Okay, so that pretty well wraps up wiping this off with acetone. And just a, a little uh, note here to those. I mean, I know some of you guys that watch this channel, you're pretty well versed in a lot of things, but there are a lot of people that aren't. The reason I'm using acetone, it really cleans the metal nice and clean and it actually makes um i don't know how to explain it but it, it makes the metal bite and it it's the same kind of effect that if you were to use a brake cleaner or something like that this particular chemical just really eats and kind of etches that's the word i think i'm looking for it kind of etches that metal and it cleans it real well so that when you come back with your primer the permatex and your final coat of uh, paint Everything is going to adhere really good. So don't ever use paint thinner or a petroleum-based product to wipe off and clean stuff like this before you paint. You want to use acetone or a brake cleaner or something like that. But acetone, in my opinion, for something like this is the best way to go. Okay, so we're finished with all of our prep and I wanted to show you real quick what I did. So you can see here on the water heater access door, remember how I did crack graphics video? Uh, last year in RGV where I taped that all off, but I did the same exact thing here. I went ahead and taped off all around the sides and a little bit on the bottom. And when I get ready to uh, spray the Permatex in my color, I'm going to take this piece of cardboard and put that right up underneath there just to make sure that no extra spray is going to get up on, the, on this bay door. This is a little added protection. We're only spraying just this little bit, this hinge right here, right? So I'm just going to be giving just light little sprays here, three coats, two minutes between each coat, let it dry overnight, and then tomorrow we're going to come and we're going to put our finished color back on there. So there's not going to be a lot of overspray here. Let me show you how I prepared the tailpipe. So you can see right here, I saw a little bit of rust right here on the bottom of this uh, tailpipe tip that I put on a few years ago. So I came back about an inch, went ahead and taped around it and then put paper around here. And that's all the preparation that was needed here. I'll be doing the same thing here. Permatex, three coats, two minutes in between, then my final high heat uh, black paint. So here is the engine bay. The engine bay here is ready to go. Here at the uh, propane tank, but I did tape off the main shutoff valve, my extended stay, the regulator, and all that, because all I'm going to be, I'm going to be shooting down like this, see? And once I've given it the three coats of Permatex on here, the, uh, I went and got some uh, Rust-Oleum paint, and I really tried to match it as close as possible, but, you know, it's probably not going to be a perfect match, but who cares? It's going to look a hundred times better than when it was before. So the other spot back there at my, uh, that back panel on the tool bay, uh, that does not need anything taped off, okay? That thing is ready to go. So all five places have been prepared, right? We have scraped a little bit, did a light sanding, wiped it off with acetone, taped off any necessary places, and now we're ready to give three coats of Permatex, two minutes between each coat, and then we're gonna let that sit overnight and cure for 24 hours. Then tomorrow afternoon when it's warm, 
we're going to give our final top coat of color. Okay, so we're going to go ahead now and apply our first coat of this Permatex rust treatment. And after I give this first coat, I'm going to give you a couple little tips and information. So we're going to very lightly spray. And by the way, any of you that want to know, yes, I have turned off my main propane valve. So I'm mainly just concerned with this plate right here. Now, the way this product works is it provides a one-step treatment that destroys old rust and it prevents new rust from uh, reoccurring. And what's so easy about this is it, it just sprays on and it's an excellent protective primer. Now, let me say that again. This is a excellent protective primer. And that's exactly what we're doing here. We're gonna use this as a primer and then we're gonna come back with the right kind of paint as a top coat and make it look nice. Okay, so we're gonna wait two minutes between each coat and we're going to do three coats. You don't wanna wait more than two minutes. This primer works best layering it in two minutes or less. So now I'm putting on the third coat, very lightly, just fanning it, okay? And that's it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go do the other four areas. There's no sense in me filming that. It's the same thing, right? So I'm going to go and give three coats to all those other four areas, a little bit less than two minutes between each coat. Then I'm going to let it dry overnight. So tomorrow we're going to come back and put on the final top coat of paint. This sucker is going to look nice. Okay, so our Permatex coats that we laid on yesterday are all dried and they've cured. They've cured overnight for 24 hours. And oh, by the way, those of you who have uh, made comments about my haircut, and some of you have even said you missed my, ba my bandana. Here's a little treat. I'm gonna wear my bandana today, okay? So the three top coats that we're going to use, the first one is VHT Flame Proof. This is what you use on headers. This thing is good, this paint here is good for up to 2000 degrees. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this on the muffler part that we did. I got this color, it comes in gloss black and crinkle black and all that. Well, I wanted to get this kind of a flat black look. That way it not only will look good on the exhaust pipe, but when we do the front of the coach on that chassis part and the back panel on the uh, storage bay, it's all gonna kind of match good. So I can still use the same paint on those two other areas, even though they don't require high heat application. For the water heater access door, I'm gonna be using my Universal Rust-Oleum paint and gloss primer in one. Now this is a gloss and it's got my favorite trigger style paint. And then on the propane tank, we're gonna also use Rust-Oleum. And I went and I took a picture of the tank and went to the hardware store to find this, to try to find the best matching gray I could. And I like this, this is gonna match well. So I've got my gloves on, my sleeves, my work clothes that I always wear when I'm working. And I'm also gonna be wearing a mask while I'm painting but especially for the areas where I use this. So a good safety precaution. Let's get started. So we're gonna start here at the exhaust pipe and I've already got my cardboard down and I took a smaller piece of cardboard to put over my dualies just to prevent any uh, overspray getting on them. Look how that rust has just been destroyed. I mean, it has totally sealed that and it binds up against that. And I think I got this light here uh, adjusted just I just love this light um, I've had this light for so I guess gosh I don't know five six years they've actually replaced it with a better one it kind of collapses and then goes forward again and it's got a big flashlight here at the end and everything but what I like about it is it's metal it's got a metal base and I could just attach it anywhere where I'm working so hopefully that light there is getting on that area but I wanted to show you see it's all dry all that flaky rust is all gone and it's bounded up. And now we're going to spray it with our flame proof 2000 degree header paint. I've already shooken it up. And what we're going to do, the way you apply the top coats on the Permatex is you use three coats. You do a light coat, wait 10 minutes, do another light coat, wait 10 minutes, and then put your final coat on. So let's do a quick test spray and let's start spraying. 
And one other thing, after I was after I showed you the Permatex that I put on here yesterday, I found a little bit of spot rusting up on this plate right here. So I went ahead and treated this area too while I was right here and then taped it off. So now when I come back and finish this part, it won't get paint on the bottom of my base. So now we've done the first coat. What I'm going to do now is the exact same process to the other two areas, the back panel on my storage bay and the front chassis. Okay, so here we are in the propane tank area and you can see how this Permatex, how it's turned all this black and that's what you want. So we've got this all clean and Permatex and I give it a quick test shot and we're going to put on our first light coat. This is a light gray. This is the Rust-Oleum, remember? Nothing heavy here. So there's our first coat of our gray. Now we're going to go do our white on the access door. Okay, so here we are at the uh, water heater access door. And I've got this all kind of taped off. And we're, we're just really going to shoot some white right in here. I am not going to do the whole pan and all that type of thing. I'm just concerned about dealing with this rust right here, okay? So there's some light coats here, one light coat, and that's it. We're gonna let that sit for 10 minutes, do another coat, wait 10 minutes, do another coat 10 minutes. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go finish all the black, I'm gonna do the rest of the gray, and come back and finish this white, and then I'll meet you at the end with some closing comments. Okay guys, well, we're all done. Take a look at these before and after pics. Look at these five areas now. Doesn't that look great? This job was really easy and most of it was laying on my back and it took very little effort and that's good as you get older, right? And it didn't cost that much to do at all. Everything we did here took three hours. One hour to prep, one hour to put on the Permatex, one hour to put on the coats, the top coat paint. There was nothing intensive about it. There was no getting on any ladders, not getting on the roof, none of that. And it certainly is going to last a lifetime, at least as long as we're going to be left on this planet. As promised, I said I was going to say a little bit about how this affects your children and grandchildren. You know, these are lifelong lessons. Doing these kinds of things, when they come over to visit with you or they camp with you, they see how hard mom and dad or grandpa and grandma work for their, the things that they own. And it's such a really cool idea. If they get up underneath there with you or whenever you're washing or whatever, but in this case, they could be handing you the tape or maybe uh, doing a little scraping or just being involved with you a little bit while you're doing these little DIY jobs. Man, it is such a great time to teach the principle that you work hard to get this kind of stuff and it takes work to take care of them. These principles are life changing. And these are times that they'll never forget being with grandpa, being with grandma and helping, helping uh, doing these little jobs. They'll never, ever forget these times. I'll have links below in the description text for everything that I used here. And as you know, I mean, Joni and I were retired just like you guys are. Every little bit helps when you use these links to purchase different things. And we just want to again say thank you, thank you, thank you. We really appreciate it. All the other information like subscribing to our channel is free, comments, likes, all that. You guys know all that stuff. That it, so there's no sense in covering that all over again. So there you have it. This is how I took care of light rust on our motorhome in about three hours of work. So until next time, this is RV Street. Stick around.